Hello, welcome everybody. This is Dr. Borad. Today I will talk to you about the benefits and risks of exercise. For those who are new to my channel, I'm a board certified cardiologist and interventional cardiologist. And here on this channel, you will find lots of education about heart health and heart disease. So if you are interested, don't forget to subscribe and switch on the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos that I post. So let's get started with this video about the risks and benefits of exercise. Physical inactivity is a major risk problem worldwide, particularly in developed countries. Medically, there are known beneficial effects of physical activity on several health outcomes, including cardiovascular disease and all-cause deaths. Although there are risks associated with exercise in some patients, the benefits outweigh the risk in most patients. The words physical activity and exercise are not interchangeable terms, are, are not the same. Physical activity is defined as bodily movement produced by contraction of skeletal muscle that increases energy expenditure above the basal level and it includes occupation, household, leisure time, and transportation activities. By contrast, the term exercise refers to a form of physical activity that is planned and structured and is repetitive and purposeful with the main objective of improvement or maintenance of one or more components of physical fitness. Physical inactivity is prevalent and associated with poor health outcomes. Worldwide, one out of four adults is physically inactive, a proportion that is increasing. Physical inactivity is particularly prevalent in more developed countries and among females, older persons, and those with poor income. In addition to lack of regular exercise, the percentage of time spent in sedentary behaviors like watching television or in front of a computer is increasing in the United States. Approximately one quarter of adults are sedentary, sitting for more than eight hours per day. You might ask, what are the poor health effects of physical inactivity and sedentary behavior? Sedentary behavior is associated with a variety of poor health outcomes, including increased deaths. The global attributable risk for premature deaths is estimated to be about 9% independent of physical activity levels. Sedentary behavior is associated with negative health outcomes. Prolonged sedentary time is associated with an increase in all-cause deaths, increase in cardiovascular disease, and increase in cardiovascular deaths increased incidence of diabetes and increased incidence of cancer. So the next question that comes to mind is what are the health effects of extended sitting time? This also appears to be an independent risk factor for death. In addition to the total daily duration of sitting, the risk of death may be higher among those who sit for prolonged uninterrupted periods as compared to those who sit for shorter interrupted periods. Prolonged sitting and sedentary time has also been associated with an increased risk for diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and cancer. People who engage in as little as one or two 75-minute sessions of exercise per week, the so-called weekend warriors, appears to be have more decreased or caused cardiovascular and cancer-related deaths compared with sedentary individuals. The benefits of exercise on reducing deaths may plateau after a certain activity level, with doses above 100 minutes per day for moderate intensity physical activity in healthy individuals do not appear to be associated with additional reduction in mortality rates. The benefits of exercise include reduction in cardiovascular disease. There is a strong inverse relationship between habitual exercise and the risk of cardiovascular disease cardiac events, and cardiac deaths for both primary and secondary prevention. Studies have shown that aerobic exercise have beneficial effects on the blood lipids, including lowering the bad cholesterol level, decreasing the inflammatory markers, especially CRP, reduction in blood pressure, 
and reduction in the risk of stroke. Reduction in diabetes. Aerobic exercise improves blood glucose control and insulin sensitivity and may prevent the development of type 2 diabetes in high-risk groups. Cancer prevention and treatment. Exercise may provide modest protection against cancer of the breast, intestine, bladder, kidney, lung, stomach, esophagus, prostate, endometrium, and pancreatic cancer. Obesity. Preventing or treating obesity may lead to significant health benefits over the course of a lifetime. Compared with weight loss the diet alone, Diet coupled with either exercise or exercise and resistance training is associated with a greater reduction in body fat and enhanced preservation of body lean mass compared with weight loss alone. Osteoporosis. Weight bearing exercise is associated with an increase in the bone mineral density in males and females. In addition, among patients with osteoporosis, exercise is associated with a decreased risk of hip fracture. Smoking cessation. Vigorous exercise modestly facilitates short and long-term smoking cessation in females when combined with cognitive behavior. Smoking cessation program. Vigorous exercise alone delays weight gain following smoking cessation. Gallstones. Physical activity is associated with a decreased risk of symptomatic gallstones. Cognition. Exercise has been associated with improved cognition in both young and older patients. However, it is unclear whether physical activity prevents dementia and cognitive decline. Psychological improvement. Regular exercise is associated with improved sleep, reduced stress and anxiety, and a lower risk of depression. Kidney function. Regular exercise may reduce the decline in kidney function seen with normal aging. Reduction in falls. Regular physical exercise is associated with fewer falls and falls related injuries in older adults and in pregnant individuals. A reduction risk of excessive weight gain, gestational diabetes and postpartum depression. Now I will discuss the risks of exercise. I have to say that the benefits of physical activity far outweighs the possible associated risks in the majority of patients. Musculoskeletal injury is the most common risk of exercise. More serious but much less common risks include arrhythmia, sudden cardiac arrest, and heart attack. Potential risks of routine exercise do not outweigh its benefits in the absence of a contraindication to exercise. The risks associated with exercise include musculoskeletal injury. Those who engage in sports activity run a higher risk of incurring minor injuries. However, people who do not participate in regular exercise are more likely to incur more severe injuries when engaging in such activities. The injuries include acute strains and tears, inflammation of various types, chronic strains, stress fractures, traumatic fractures, nerve pulses, tendonitis, and bursitis. Musculoskeletal injuries vary based on a variety of factors, such as age, type of activity, whether it is contact sport, high impact exercise, or walking, and depends on the intensity. Many of the musculoskeletal injuries are secondary to overuse. Arrhythmia. This is abnormal cardiac beating, other than the normal sinus rhythm. There is an increased risk of arrhythmia during exercise in patients with underlying heart disease or a prior history of arrhythmia. Exercise training may reduce atrial and ventricular arrhythmia risk by increasing myocardial oxygen supply and reducing sympathetic nervous system activity. Sudden cardiac death. This is very rare, but may occur during physical or sexual activity. The increase in risk is associated in both males and females, and it is estimated that the absolute risk of sudden cardiac death during any one episode of vigorous exercise is as low as one death in 1.5 million episodes of exercise. The mechanisms of sudden cardiac death in those who exercise include coronary artery disease, 
arrhythmia, especially ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation, and structural heart disease. Heart attack. Physical or sexual activity is associated with a temporary increase in the risk of having a heart attack, particularly among those who exercise infrequently and have multiple cardiac risk factors. Out of all heart attacks, about 7% of patients report physical exertion at the onset of their infarction. The relative risk is much higher in patients who perform regular exercise less than 4 times per week as compared to those who exercise 4 or more times per week. Rhabdomyolysis. This is a condition that occurs when damaged muscle tissue releases its protein and electrolytes into the blood. These substances can damage the heart and the kidneys and cause permanent disability or even death. Rhabdomyolysis may occur following extreme exertion in individuals with normal muscles when the energy supply to the muscle is insufficient to meet demands. Severe complications of rhabdomyolysis include kidney failure, electrolyte abnormalities such as elevated potassium level, and acidosis. Bronchoconstriction Exercise induced bronchoconstriction occurs in majority of patients with current symptoms of asthma. The magnitude of exercise induced bronchoconstriction is correlated with the degree of airway hyperresponsiveness. Improving a patient's cardiovascular fitness reduces the minute ventilation required for a given level of exercise, thereby decreasing the stimulus for bronchoconstriction. Regular long-term exercise may be helpful in preventing the onset of exercise-induced bronchoconstriction. If you have any question about what I presented to you today, then subscribe to my channel and share your question in the comment section below and I will reply to you. If you have a question that you would not like to share in public, then follow me on Twitter or Instagram at drbolad and then send me a private direct message and I will reply to you. If you found value in this video, then please like and share this video with family and friends. This is Dr. Bolad helping you with your heart health. Thanks for watching and talk to you soon.